welcome back to the always smooth and always smarmy public television news show. First up, Russia, where the new prime minister has been putting his mark on the political goings on. Well, it seems that the old motherland's number one killer is still the bottle. It's not the beat famine? No, constant popular belief, it is not the beat famine. We go now to Russian correspondent Vladimir Shirokonovich, who is at the Bolshevik Physiological Research Facility, where uh, we are, he is to interview a scientist on human alcohol consumption. Well, so much for that. Yeah, that certainly was... Uh, that was pretty disappointing. Yes. Well, now we go on to Mexico, where a new technological development could potentially save Mexico's economy. Or potentially starve them. Or potentially build character. T.S. Walker has the story. Hola, amigos. It's T.S. Walker down here in old Mexico. Now I'm here to tell you about something we've recently discovered. It combines the agriculture with the automobile. We call it ethanol. Now, ethanol may sound complicated, but it's actually moonshine, but with a kick. Yeehaw! All right. Now, ethanol's basic principle is we take corn products and we turn it into gasoline products. Basically, you put a corn tortilla in a finely made automobile and it ruins. Now, some people say, T.S., you know there's people down in Mexico who can't afford tortillas because we steal all the corn and put them in our cars. And I say, eat some flour tortillas. Cereal imports the healthy American economy. All right. Oh, hola, what? amigo. One, one dollar. Como estas? One dollar. Oh, uh, no thanks. Have the an ethanol strip. Okay. Hey, amigo, one, buy an one, SUV. One dollar. Thank you, T.S. And you know, T.S. bears a uh, rather striking resemblance. Next, China's GDP has been increasing despite widespread economic decline, while its environmental policies have remained lax. The Chinese government continues to prioritize economic growth over environmental protection. Oh, hello, Freeze. No, Come no. here, Freeze. Uh, no. Uh, it's it's, 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 it's oh, oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Excellent. It's going to be looking that way. It's looking the other way. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in, uh, in tastier news, Halloween has come early to Iran, and candy sales are up throughout the Middle East. Nate, uh, what do you mean? Uh, haven't you seen any pictures from Iran lately? Everyone's there, everyone there is dressed up as ghosts. Ghosts? Ew. Nate, you mean burkas. Those are religious coverings. Ooh. The, yeah, um, that, that preserves purity of the women. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I probably should have probably should have known that. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. Uh. <sighs> Well, oh, uh, isn't it? I, I, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's yes. time okay. for our, uh, our 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 fireside chat with Percy Olsberg. Our... Uh, oh, hello there. I'm Percy Olsberg. Today we shall be discussing the pertinent, rather pertinent issue of immigration in Great Britain and what it is doing to the society. Now, as you may be aware, there has been a massive influx of migration from the darker areas of the world into our Commonwealth. Now, what, what are the implications of this migration? Well, first of all, we have uh, increasing stratification between upper and lower classes. What is this creating for our social safety net? Well, you have a drain, a drain in health services, which is aggravated by our aging population. In, in, in addition, we also have members of the Islamic faith who are wishing to impose Sharia law, especially in some neighborhoods of London. Now, this, 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 this flies in the face of British common law, and I, if you would imagine for a second, if you will, a member of parliament there on the floor of parliament with his turban or his fez riding on his camel, advocating that women should be put in headscarves, it's blasphemy. Now this, this is all, this is raised the question that we are all asking with our poorly aligned yellowed teeth. What does it truly mean to be British? 
Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so, uh, go, go ahead. Call it us. Oh, it's Jomo. Oh, oh, Jomo. What up, Jomo? Ooh, ooh. Oh. Uh, this just in. One of our foreign correspondents in Nigeria has been captured by men rebels. Jomo, Jomo, is it on? I, I, I think so. Jomo, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Is, is there a light or something? We, or we are men, and we have Oscar. Oh. We, we want. Reparations! Reparations! Jomo, what else do we want? We want total control of oil revenue from Niger Delta! No, total control of oil revenue! <laughs> Our thoughts and prayers are with you, Oscar. Yes, and I too, and I can speak for us all, which I were an Oscar Minor Weaver. And that wraps up the uh, news hour for public television. Dude. Ready to hit the beach? Jacob! Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's do this.